We are going to unbox BenQ Pro Designer PD2506Q. This is their starter 25-inch 2K display with a lot of amazing capability. One of them being that it can support DisplayPort daisy chaining. And for us to test this, I'm going to need two of these, and I do have those. So this will be a dual unboxing. I have a brand new retail unit, and I'll be unboxing a refurbished unit as well. This is also going to give us a comparison between a retail versus a refurbished unboxing, and we can discuss some of the differences between these as well. There's a lot to cover, so let's find out together. This is Artist Right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. Full disclosure, I am BenQ Global Ambassador for their Pro Display line. This would include their SW Hardware Calibre Display for Photographers and their PD Pro Designer Series, which we'll be unboxing in this video. BenQ has sent me these two loaner units to do an unboxing review and some educational content, which I'll be posting on my channel. All the opinions you're about to hear regarding this display are always going to be my own. And with this in mind, let's unbox this PD2506Q. So first, we're going to unbox the retail unit. And pretty much this comes in a box just like what you're really seeing now. It also tells you that for this small display to unbox it you want to set the box up rather than lay the box down which is perfectly okay so let's open it up and also say hold this side of the screen when taking it out okay uh, this is partly to really remind us that we're not really supposed to be touching the panel right in front of it so that's a good thing um, so what I'm gonna do is okay so what I'm gonna do first for this is pull out the panel and I'll simply set this on my table for now Let's pull the base out. And we can see that when we purchase these as a brand new unit, you get all these wrappings and everything that it comes in. I'll also pull the cable. For this, you get USB-C to USB-C, a power cord. You get a full display port to display port. USB type A to USB type B, 3.0 uplink, and a few other things. You get the quick starter guide, and as usual, we also have the individual calibration report, which we see right now. And for this, we are getting a value of, so let's pull this out, super tight. So for this unit, we have an average Delta E tested of 1.22, which is still really good. And this is way under the Delta E of three that BenQ guarantees we're going to get on these display. So what I'm going to do now is pull up. This is the stand and I'll be assembling this very similar to the other series from BenQ display. What we want to do is just line this up at the very bottom, just like so. Just attach it there and hand tight this screw in just like so. One thing to be careful with the PD series is that there is a cable holder there that could easily fall off. So just something to remember and be cognizant of. All right, so this is our panel. This is the PD2506Q. Let's pull this out. And I'm just holding the back of the panel like so. Like I said, these are easy to hold one hand. So what I'm gonna do is mount this to the stand. And we're simply gonna just do this in a, the way how I've done it before. Latch at the very top like so. Once that goes in, all right, just like that. So we're gonna snap that in. I'll pull some of the stickers out. Another thing that you'll also see on this display as well, it says do not tear. So pretty much it looks like there is a like screen protector. It really is not. It's part of coating on a panel. You definitely don't want to tear that off. Now the coating on this panel, if you watch my other videos, reviews before, especially with BenQ new SW series, for example, SW272U and Q. This has a matte coating, but it's not the fine coated panel or the SW321C, what they call their art panel. It's not really quite that matte, but again, this is going to do a pretty good job diffusing light that are pretty in your studio like you're seeing now. So let's put this back together and let's unbox the refurbished unit. And now to the refurbished unboxing. For a refurb and key, what you do get is just a plain simple box like you're seeing now. There's not a lot of labels or any of the BenQ logo or printing on the side. The only label you're gonna be able to see is pretty much a shipping label on the side and also one that tells you the display model number and the serial number on the side of the box. Otherwise, it is pretty much a nondescript box. Now, the way how refurbish works in general is that 
Many times a customer would buy one of these, decide that this is not the right display for them, it doesn't work out for some reason, so they return it within the return period. From there, BenQ would pretty much go through the refurbished process, test these displays, make sure that everything is working correctly, and then sell them on their refurbished store. I have the opportunity to unbox many BenQ refurbished display already, and for most of my clients that I consult with, if you want to save a little money, I would say that, yeah, definitely look at their refurbished product. They are a really great product, and they also do come with a warranty as well. So with this in mind, let's unbox this refurbished PD2506Q. So with this, once we open the box, it's really a different experience. You still get some of the wrappings that are there. It's still padded really well from BenQ refurb site. So we do get extra padding on some of these. And if you take a look at this right now, I mean, I'll pull this base out. I mean, this base is practically brand new. There's no scratch or anything on it whatsoever. So I'll put this on our table. You pretty much get everything that is very similar. So you get the base to stand. Now what you are going to be missing from the refurbished unit a lot of times are the documentation, especially the other thing that if you really care about the individual calibration report are no longer gonna really be there with the refurbished unit. So that's something that I note before unboxing a refurbished one is that we don't get a lot of the documentation, especially the individual calibration report. But overall, I would say that if you're really looking for some saving, this is really not a bad deal at all. And again, this is pretty much brand new. So let's set this up the exact same way. And even though you are getting refurbished unit, you are getting a brand new set of cables that is very similar to the one that comes with the retail unit. I mean, the cables are going to be exactly the same. Whatever cable came in the retail unit, you're also going to get those cable brand new in the refurbished unit as well. And pretty much here comes the panel. So the panel are all padded like so. They're really well padded and this nice bubble wrap. Now, because they have to test these, you're gonna get the panel wrapped in this plastic coating, but you're not necessarily going to get the white foam bag that the panel comes in. And if there are any like stickers on a panel that, you know, that's like a quick start guide or something like that, those won't necessarily be on the refurb panel. But I'm looking at this right now. I mean, the panel looks extremely clean. So we're gonna also hang this up from our stand. And because I have these two units behind me now, what we're gonna do is set it up. I'm gonna give you a quick overview. We're gonna talk about some of the features and test out DisplayPort daisy chaining and MST feature on these two BenQ PD2506Q. I'll be back soon. I have everything set up and connected. I'll share with you how I link these display together. I've been doing testing off camera on multiple computers. I'll share with you the finding of those and some of the quirks I found regarding these PD. And lastly, we're gonna treat this as a mini review because there may not be a full review that's gonna be coming down the road. With that in mind, we have unboxed two PD2506Q. One is the retail, the other one is the refurbished unit. The first thing I do once I turn on the display is check the on time. The retail unit shows zero, the refurbished unit showed three hours of on time. This is part of the on time that is at BenQ facility as well to test, make sure that everything is working properly. But if you get a refurbished one, you're not gonna get a unit with a thousand hours of on time or anything like that. So I don't think that's really going to be a big concern. The other variation between the two are going to be, for example, any stickers you find on display won't be on the refurbished unit. The boxings are gonna be different, so they're no longer gonna come in the retail box for the refurb one. Packaging materials on inside are gonna be slightly different. You are going to get auto cables, but when it comes to documentation, for example, quick start guide, warranty documentation, you will get that on the retail one. On the refurb one, you can download that from the website. And lastly, the variation comes into the individual calibration report. You're always going to get this with the retail unit, but when it comes to the refurbished unit, those are just not going to be there. So that's something to expect. In my experience, unboxing BenQ, SW, and PD displays that comes with these, they're all really good Delta EY. So even if you should get a refurbished unit, I probably would not worry about these much at all. So the way how these units are linked up to my computer at the moment, I am using a PC laptop. This is a Dell, and this is pretty much just plug in from a USB type C. This is plugged into USB type C on this primary display, and it is providing 60 watts of power to my laptop right now. So it is charging, it is sustaining my laptop operation, which is great. And on this display, I have the full display port 
cable plug into the display port out and is plugged into the full size display port in on the secondary PD2506Q. And this is pretty much running an extended desktop on a PC computer. So pretty much this is display number one, two, and three. And I have display settings showing on my laptop right now. If I drag this across, you will see that it's going on the second and also the third display. So these are now being treated as independent display. The reason why this works via this one USB Type-C cable is because on PC laptop, it also has support for DisplayPort Multi-Stream Transporter, MST, which pretty much allows us to really do just this. Daisy chain a DisplayPort out from this 2K display to another 2K display. Now, a few things in testing this out is that MST, multi-stream transport, is not enabled by default. So you need to go into the display setting to enable that first. The other thing I also found out about these displays is that out of box, it does not have input source detection. So you have to define what input source you want to use. This means that the first time you plug in the display, you're most likely gonna be staring at a blank screen if you didn't use anything other than HDMI, which chances are, if we're gonna use it in this capacity, well, we're not gonna be using HDMI anyway. So you need to define the input source. The other thing that I would probably do as well, if you're gonna just use one of these, is change the USB-C signal type. So by default is defaulting to USB 2.0 connection. I'm not sure why that's the case, but I've changed that to USB 3.0. And if you're using this in a multi display or you're trying to use the MST function from DisplayPort, it doesn't really matter. Now, when I've tested this on a Macintosh system, the story is a little bit different. And I have tested this both with an Apple Silicon and also with an Intel machine. So on the Apple Silicon one, I have my 14 inch MacBook Pro. This happens to have the M2 Max SoC on the inside, so it can support multi-display without any problems at all. But when I try to plug this in, I'll show you the result right now. So it recognizes the display without any problems whatsoever. However, the way how it's really recognizing the display right now is in mirrored mode. You can see right there, the moment I drag the display setting across, it's now mirroring each other. And I've run numerous tests already. I cannot get the Mac to really see these as two separate displays. They will only see them as one display and just mirror the signal. Uh, another quirk that I also found out on the Macintosh system as well, which I find rather interesting, is that it recognizes these 2K displays as a 4K display. You can really scale the resolution up to 4K. I'm not sure if this is necessarily a um, communication bug between the display and a laptop or not, but this is something that I have noticed. And I've also run a similar test on a Intel Macintosh and the results are pretty much the same. It will not do DisplayPort multi-stream transport on a Macintosh. So if you have a Mac, I would not look into getting these two um, to do the MST type function. I would not even worry about that at all. If you're on a PC, this is something that you can definitely look at. One more thing that I'd like to share regarding DisplayPort daisy chaining is that if you like the way how this is linked up to a PC using one cable and you can connect two displays up to it, you can do this on a slightly larger display as well. That is BenQ PD2705Q. That is a 27 inch 2K versus a 25 inch 2K. Otherwise, they're gonna function in pretty much the exact same way when we talk about DisplayPort MST. Now regarding this PD2506Q, what are some of the specs of it and what do I think of it? I would say that the color specs are really good. 100% sRGB, Rec. 709, 95% P3. You have a 60 Hz refresh rate, a contrast ratio of 1001, 117 pixel pitch or pixels per inch. These are pretty much your standard configuration you can get in many displays out there. But what you generally don't get with other displays is the fact that this has been calibrated rigorously from the factory. Knowing BenQ AccuColor and the way how they work, you're gonna get really good accurate colors from these display. The only downside I would say about this panel and this being that it is a more, I would say starter or entry model is that the panels are only eight bit. They're not 10 bit Dunvine, eight bit plus FRC, like they're, I would say larger siblings or the flagship model in the lineup. That would be the one thing that I would probably look at this and maybe consider this a little bit more if I would to purchase this. Now, where do I think this display will fit in? If you're trying to take a small display on the road for like good design, just to get you going, this would definitely be the one to consider. You're starting out, you may be on a somewhat of a finite budget and you really need to think about like how much you can really dedicate to a display. 
these are really good for that. However, if you are a pro seasoned designer, you want to get something good right away, I recommend looking at the larger BenQ PDs or SW series that can really show um, 10 bit Dunvine 8 bit plus FRC, that's going to be better for you. Now, if you're going to ask me this one question is, Art, what do you think? Should I get a display that has a really good color gamut that has been calibrated really well from the factory that can only show 8 bit? Or should I go for a display that can show, for example, 10 bit Dunvine 8 bit plus FRC that the color gamut is not quite as good and hasn't been calibrated as well from the factory. I would probably say I would go for one that has been calibrated really well from the factory, even though it may be an 8 bit panel. So hopefully that gives you some insight into this model a little bit and also the way how DisplayPort uh, multi stream transport really is working with PC and on a Mac as well. Now, if you're on a Mac, it's not really just the end all story. It doesn't mean you can't link up two displays to it. You can, you just have to plug in both of these displays directly to your computer and you would then be able to use it. Obviously, Apple SoC or Apple Silicon is going to be the caveat. So if you have the pro or higher, you're going to be okay when you link up to display. If you just, for instance, have just the regular M1 or M2, if you have the desktop version of those, like the Mac mini version, you're going to be fine with two displays. However, if you have a MacBook Air or the MacBook Pro 13 inch, you can only link up one external display to those. So just think about the ship that you have as well. Hopefully you find this information helpful. Anyway, that has been a lot about this display, the way how they function, DisplayPort MST, which I think is a really cool technology. And I secretly wish that Apple would support it, but it's not, but it's okay. Now that we get a chance to test this out, I can tell you for certain that it works on a PC, on a Mac. Well, you can still link it up traditionally. Hope you find this information helpful. If you have any questions or comment, please leave them below. Give this a like, subscribe and hit the bell you're new and in our retrust. trust.